You're listening to Living in Spain Podcasts with David Wright. Hi, my name's David Wright and welcome to another one of my podcasts, Living and Working in Spain. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about mobile phones, internet, high-speed internet, fiber optics, and who's the best courier to go with with your mobile phone network here in Spain. I'm also going to be giving you tips and advice on buying a car here in Spain, should you get your UK car here and get it registered to save some money, or just go and buy a, a Spanish car here in Spain. I'm also going to be talking about what's the first things you need to be doing here in Spain when you first move here, whether you're buying or renting, setting up your utility bills, getting connected to the light, electricity and water, some fantastic tips. So stay tuned, it's all in this show. Okay, so talking about cars here in Spain. Now, there's two sides of the fence here. There's the people that come here to Spain and they start from scratch and they buy a Spanish car here and get used to it and, and carry on their life with a Spanish Spanish car, whether it be uh, new, second hand. Or there's the other people, that are the train of thought, where bringing over their UK car and getting it registered here and changing everything over and feeling comfortable with that. Now, they've both got their ups and downs and I'm going to just briefly go over some of the, the things that I've come across here and what I've heard and what I've experienced personally. Okay so bringing your UK car over to Spain. Yes it can be a good idea and you can save quite a lot of money doing it. Is it hassle? It can be. Um, this is my personal experiences. When I first moved here to Spain about 16-17 years ago I had worked for a guy here, a British guy and he had a, a, um, a Land Rover, a British Land Rover and it was quite a new one there's good condition and everything and he got it re-registered here he went through all the paperwork got the lights changed the gases the emissions everything and it was fine it was all all legal all above board and great so for the first first few months I was here I used his car because I was working for him and I drove around a lot picking up materials in it so I used I used the Land Rover and it was it was fine until about two weeks into using it I got stopped by the police and they went through all the paperwork with a fine tooth comb. At the time, my Spanish wasn't very good, so it was a bit daunting, it was a bit difficult, but everything was fine, okay, and away I went. Anyway, this went on, I was working about an hour away from where I, where I lived at the time, so I had a, an hour or so drive each day, and this happened about three or four times a month. I was getting stopped by police at different sections, different police, but always getting pulled in, checking the paperwork. Anyway, one day I, I asked... A friend of mine who was a Spanish policeman here, a friend of a friend who was a Spanish policeman, and, and he said, well, what do you expect? He said, the police here get commissions if they stop you and they can give you a fine. Now, how true that is, I don't know. I have heard this a couple of times before. But anyway, personally with me and the car, we didn't have to pay any fines because everything was, was okay. But they go to the extent where they open the bonnet up, they check all the numbers, they check in under the hood, and they really do go through it with a fine tooth comb. And it's a bit of a hassle. I normally found this happened a lot when I was coming off or going onto a motorway at roundabouts, and especially late at night. Police are looking out for uh, foreign registered cars here. They can tell quite easily you're sitting on the other side of the car now a lot of um people i know here have done this and they brought the car over and they've sailed through and it's only cost them a few hundred euros to get it changed over and get all the paperwork done and then there's a couple of other people i know that have had an absolute nightmare with it and it's taken about two months in one case to get it all done get things changed over the admissions and pay the taxes and this is another thing you have to remember if you're bringing a fairly new car over from the UK, you have to pay an import duty on a tax. And sometimes this can be quite a few thousand euros. So that's something else you need to check on before you bring the car over. Um, another downside to doing this is when you're driving here in Spain, even if the paperwork's okay, everything is fine, you're going to be sitting on the other side of the road. So when, on the other side of the car, sorry. So when you're driving along and you want to overtake something, it's very difficult to see past a vehicle to overtake. That is one downside. Another one 
car parks here. There's a lot of car parks here that have got barriers or they're underground car parks in Spain. And the barriers are obviously on the, are going to be the taking the ticket is on the other side. So unless you're able to stretch over and take the ticket out, it's going to be very difficult. Sometimes in the underground car parks here, I've noticed there's there's very little room and they're much narrower entrances and exits to the, to the, what we have in the UK. So, you know, being able to open a door and get out and go round, especially when you're in a queue of other vehicles, is very inconvenient. Also, a lot of shopping centres near here and commercial parks, they have barriers to get in and out of the car parks or the, the shopping centres. So you're going to come across these barriers a lot here in Spain and if you're driving around in Spain there's tolls at places so the tolls are another another example of that so that they have got quite a few downsides to doing it and personally my recommendation is if you're going to live in Spain any amount of time just buy a Spanish car is the money to be saved yes there is you can do it quite quickly you can be lucky but I suggest getting somebody that's used to doing this there are companies here that offer it offer the, the service to do this for you get them to do it and get them to do it properly and check the paperwork and you should be okay and you could save yourself some money the other thing as well to remember is that once you've done it all you are going to devalue the car a little bit because when you want to go on to sell it later on unless you're selling it to another brit the spanish aren't going to buy it they wouldn't want to touch it with a barge pole here um so you know there are good sides there are downsides but personally with the experience that i've had and the people that i know i wouldn't do it i would recommend going to buy a spanish car here now people say well spanish cars are expensive here yes sometimes they are but it depends where you go and and how you go about buying it so here's a couple of tips i've got if you want to buy a Spanish car here, there you've got a few options. You can go to the main dealers, you can go to small private dealers in, in their own house that are advertising in local papers, or you can go to the bank. Yeah, that's right, I said the bank. The banks sell cars now. And it's not actually selling, they call it renting, and it's not actually renting either. But anyway, let me explain. So the other week, well the other week, a few months ago when I was sorting out some paperwork for my mortgage i spoke to the bank manager about it and he said to me oh by the way how about um getting yourself a new van and i said a new van he said yeah we offer vans and cars now and i said really and he said it's renting and what it is you they have a list of cars and all the banks here are doing it now or most of the main high street banks are doing it they have a list of the cars that they've got on offer for you and they're all brand new cars and some vans as well. You pick the van or car that you like off of their paperwork and you negotiate the price. They all have a, f a, f a price against them, but there's payments you can you can negotiate with the bank manager. Then once you've decided which car you want, then you can pay for four years. It's a four-year contract. And what that means is you get all the insurance, fully comprehensive insurance, which is can be expensive here in Spain, fully comprehensive insurance for any driver that's over 26 years old, that's covered in the, in the policy. Then you get all the servicing, the maintenance charges, breakdown covery, all of this, and a courtesy car for four years, all included in the package. The only thing you really need to do is put petrol in it. Okay, so... After four years, what happens? Well, you get an option to buy the car minus the payments you've made on it, or you can tear the contract up after four years and just start again. Pick yourself out a new car, have the exactly same car again, but brand spanking new. So that's a brand new car every year. So what does this cost? Well, for example, on the catalogue that I was looking at in the bank, and this is with Bankia, I'm with Bankia at the moment, but I know some of the other banks are doing it as well. They had cars starting from €99 Euros a month. €99 Euros a month for four years for a brand new car, worry-free. That is pretty good deal in my book. Okay, so go to your bank here in Spain and ask them, see what they've got, and shop around as well. Some of these banks are doing better deals than others. So, so that's one tip. Tip two. Okay, so the second tip I want to give to you here is go to the main dealers in Spain. Many of the main garages here, like whatever company that you're, you're interested in cars, there's hundreds of them here, look around for the main dealer. And for example, I went to the Seat main de dealer here when I first moved here and I wanted to buy a, a new car. And I, I signed up to buy a Seat Ibiza, a four-door hatchback, um, a 1600 basic car, good run around, brand new. 
did all the paperwork and everything and on the way out coming out the showroom there was one in the showroom window and I said to the, the guy oh that's like what we just ordered you know for a couple of weeks time and he went yeah it's exactly the same but that's so I said well you said we can't have one they haven't got it in stock yet he said no that's the next demonstration he said but that's for sale and I went well what do you mean and he said well it's it's got 1800 miles on the clock 1800 kilometers it's nine months old and it's for sale absolutely immaculate inside and out so i said to him well how much is it and it worked out three thousand euros cheaper than the brand new one three thousand euros and it's only got 1800 kilometers on the clock so we actually turned around sat down tore out the paperwork and took out the new one with with this x demonstration car and in three days after that we went back all the paperwork is ready and i drove it off the forecourt there and then and it absolutely perfect inside and out looks like a brand new car so i would recommend looking for a main dealer in your area go in speak to the guy see what they got on offer and see if you can get a deal Tip number three. Okay, so buying locally in Spain. If your Spanish isn't very good, get somebody that you know speaks Spanish well and go to some of the forecourts here, the second-hand dealers, and you'll find that the second-hand cars here do hold their value, but you can haggle with these people. One of the cars that I bought here a few years ago was a Nissan pickup truck. And I saw this Nissan pickup truck on a forecourt in a second-hand dealers, and it looked quite good. I quite fancied it and he wanted €11,000 for it. And it was perfect for me and for my work at the time. So I went in, I had a chat with him, and he wasn't negotiating on the price, that was it. So I said, OK, thank you very much, and I walked away. About a week later, I walked past the shop again, or driving past on my way home from work, and I went in and had another look round, and he could see that I was still interested, and we talked, and he said, well, you know, what do you think? And I said, well, it's too much money. Well, what, what do you think? What do you think? So I offered him 3000 less, and he sort of laughed and said, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. I can drop 500 I went, OK, OK, no worries, I'm looking around. Left it another couple of weeks, walking around, driving around, looking at other properties, uh, uh, other cars, and then one day I walked past, and I thought... I'm gonna. I was just going to the shops, which was quite nearby, and I thought I'm gonna have another look. And there was nobody around in the forecourt. I went up to the the truck, which was still parked outside, walked around it, had a good look at it. And I thought, you know what, I I really want it. I'm I'm gonna go for it. Anyway, the guy came out and he he looked at me and he said, "You're really interested in it." Look, I said, "Look, I am, but what can you do on a deal?" And he said, well, look, come inside. We went inside. He said, are you, are you going to buy it now? And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it this week. I'll put a deposit down and I'll buy it this week. Um, but, you know, you've got to come down on the price. So he knocked 1,500 euros off the price. 1,500 euros off the price. I'll, I'll come back a few days later. We did all the paperwork and the money. And it comes with a year guarantee. So that was perfect. I was very happy with that. But you've got to be able to haggle. You can't show that you're too keen on buying the, buying the car from Because especially if you're British and you sp don't speak Spanish very well, they're going to take a bit of an advantage of you. Okay, tip number three is buying from somebody local, from the newspaper, a private dealer here, or somebody that's advertising in the street, they've got a car for sale. Now, if you're buying from somebody like this, you need to take somebody with you that knows a little bit about cars. Um, like anywhere, you can get stitched up buying second-hand cars, so take somebody with you that knows a bit about the cars, and somebody that definitely speaks very good Spanish. Have a good look over the car, take it for a test drive, and what I would advise is, Ask the guy to get a MOT on it, or as they call it here, an ITV. Even if the ITV has got three, four months, or eight months left on it, or even ten months, tell him to put a full year's MOT on it, a full year's ITV. So that means it will pass the ITV, so you know it's sound and it's roadworthy, and you've got a year before you've got to worry about anything going wrong with it. And also, all second-hand cars, even from private dealers here, have to come with a six-month guarantee now by law. So you are, have got some protection here buying from a dealer, but I would suggest you take somebody with you and and ask them to put a full year's MOT on it, or as it's called here, an ITV. And then you, you're covering yourself as much as you possibly can. So there's a few options here about buying cars or bringing your own British car over. Um, it's really all down to personal choice. But as I said before, if you're going to live in Spain any amount of time, just buy a Spanish car and you'll soon get used to it. And it'd be a lot more comfortable and probably safer in the long run. 
Okay, so what are some of the things you're going to need to be doing when you first move to Spain? And this is what we're going to talk about at the moment. So when you're first here in Spain, you're moving here, you're coming here to live full time, whether you're renting, you're buying, or you've bought a place here in Spain, it's going to be the same sort of things that everyone has to go through here. And that is connecting your light, electric, water, all your utilities and setting up your direct debits with the banks and things like that. So this can all be very daunting here in Spain. So I'm going to give you some tips and and some things that can save you time and some money okay so the best tip I can give you is when you're first here unless you speak very good Spanish I would take somebody with you who does speak Spanish to help you with these and somebody that knows how the things work here how the system goes that's done it before themselves and pay them to do it get somebody paid not just a mate from the pub you can take a, a lawyer a solicitor with you or something like that but you really need somebody that knows the system here because it can be very daunting and you're going to be sitting around waiting for appointments and stuff like that and this does need to be done correctly the first time around any little mistakes here any spelling mistakes on your name your address number your passport numbers this can lead to big problems further down the line and it can be a nightmare to get it changed or corrected later on so pay a little bit extra now take somebody with you and get it done properly from day one and you can sit back and relax a little bit more later on so here's some of my tips when you're going to these offices you normally have to take a number or make an appointment and you're sitting there waiting so take a book with you but the biggest thing I can say is take copies of everything now you're going to need your main passport your your, your uh, the, the passport not a copy of it or not a photograph of it anything like that you will need the, the original passport you will need your NOE number and residencies if you've got all these and take photocopies of them as well take about two or three photocopies of everything you can think of and your address and directions and your phone and stuff like that and your bank details have it all written down have it all written out and make several copies of it and take that with you because they're going to need it most of the time they last for a couple or they make copies and sometimes they charge you so it's just easier to make your own copies print a few off at home and take it with you and then there's no mistakes about the spelling no mistakes about the address and things like that now, all of these can be done in one day, okay? I wouldn't recommend trying to do it all in one day. Um, I have actually done that when I moved the dress here, re-registered everything, but it, it's quite um, time-consuming and a bit stressful at times as well. So, you know, give yourself two or three days, go and do the light, electric, and then the water, um, and... I would recommend doing a little recce trip first as well. Find out where these companies are, where the electric place is, where you've got to go to the council offices to do this and do that. Um, so when you get up in the morning, you know exactly where you're going. You haven't got to worry about trying to get there on time and queue up and being the last ones in and sitting around waiting. So, you know, plan ahead a little bit here and can save you some time and some stress. OK, another thing is when you're going to the light and electric company and the water you can ask them what are the best tariffs they're going to just connect you up and put you on what they think is right but some of these areas you can actually ask them what is the best for you if it's a house an apartment a new place an old place and tell them how many people living in a house if it's going to be there all year you're living there all year round or just a holiday home and they can suggest what is the best tariff for you to start out at and you can always start off at a low tariff and move up some some of these places won't offer you money it's just one one size fits all but a lot of the times you can ask and they will bend over backwards to try and help you to give you the best deal okay so uh, water company as well that's the same thing you know ask them see what they can do with, with a deal for you now once you've done all this you come away and they're giving you a time and that but don't worry it will take about 10 days normally and um, sometimes it can take two weeks or three weeks even for them to send the guy up to have a look scratch his head at the electric cupboard and things like that and walk away and come back another two days later so don't expect it to be done overnight and um, when I bought my last house here it was a new house and I needed it to connect up there was all the water and light electric there it just needed to be connected to the street and it was just literally open a box and put a, a meter on and it took me three weeks i was in the house with no water waiting for the guy to come and when he came it took him about 10 minutes to do it so you know expect expect to wait some time so that's why when you're first here as soon as you're here don't go sitting on the beach or going to a bar somewhere go out get these things done first and then relax a little bit afterwards because you know it will take you uh, at least 10 days i would say to get these these things put on
Okay, telephones as well. So I'm going to talk about telephones a little bit now and internet and uh, fiber optic and the best carrier. Who's the best carrier here to go with? So 17 years I've been here now and I think I've been with pretty much all of the carriers here. I've been with um, Movie Star, who I'm with at the moment. I've been with Orange. I've been with Vodafone. I've been with O2. Um, you name it, I think I've been with all of them. And to be honest, they're all pretty much the same here in Spain. They all do different deals, different tariffs, um, and it's all down to personal choice. But the reason I'm with Movistar at the moment is because I find that they're giving the all-round package, the best package that I could get at the time, and I'm happy with their service. I've heard a lot of good things from them. And the other thing is there's lots of Movistar shops around. Wherever you go, you're always seeing a Movistar shop on, in most towns now, and it's easy to go in and ask for help or problems if you if you have any in the future. When I was with Vodafone, there was nowhere I could go. I couldn't find a Vodafone shop anywhere. I had to put uh, get somebody. I had to pay somebody at the time to phone them for me because my Spanish wasn't very good. Then they put you on hold, and it took ages and ages to get a simple problem sorted out. Whereas with Movie Star, they got shops. You just go in, and you'll find that most of the staff in there speak pretty good English now as well. So. That's another uh, a plus factor. They're quite easy to use and sort out any problems if you do have any problems. So movie star. Let me tell you what I've got. I've got fiber uh, optic internet, a high speed internet, which is fantastic. I'm very happy with that. I've got two mobile phones and a landline, and it's all through the same company. I've got uh, my old iPhone, um, which my wife now uses, and I've got a new iPhone 7, well new, it's a couple of years old now, all through the same company. Now I'm going to be changing my iPhone in September to the new iPhone and when that comes out and that's all going to be through Movie Star as well. So let me just tell you a, a little thing here about Movie Star. When I had my house in, in the mountains here, we had high speed internet connected and I wanted to get it changed to the new house where we are now. I'm building my new house here and it's about an hour away from where I live in El Maria. So I went in the Movie Star shop and I said, look, you know, we want to change the uh, fiber optic, uh, have it put the internet to the new house. Yeah, no problem, we can do that. It's 95 euros just to change it over. Well, that's expensive, you know. So I, I said to them, well, that's a lot of money, you know. And they said, well, hang on a minute. I had a look through the computer. Well, you've been a, a member here, um, a contract with us for 18 months or so now. So, OK, we, we do it for 25 euros. Um, big jump. So, yeah, OK, great. Uh, 25 euros when can you come and do it well we're sending an engineer around we are put it on the on the computer now there's a note on there and you'll get a phone call and the engineer will come around to your old house and have a look and then they set, set up for the new house okay fine so anyway went back home when we went back home there was an engineer there actually waiting in the street outside our house and uh, he was about to get on his phone and we pulled up outside and I couldn't believe he was waiting for us. And he said, yeah, you, your internet, there was a problem with the internet. So I said, no, there's no problem. We want it changed over. Oh, right, OK, you know, so there's a bit of a mistake there. But anyway, so he came in, had a look and he said, yeah, that's not a problem. We we'll come out to your new address um, in a couple of days time. This was on a Friday. Anyway, Tuesday morning, the guy turned up at the new address, um, came down the street, had a look opened up the manhole and he said there's no fiber internet here it's at the end of the street so we need to run a new cable i went well okay so what does that involve well no it's not a problem for you we, we've got to do it so i said but is there any charge no 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 it's all included I'm fine so the guy and his mate got out of the van they run all new cable right down the end of the street up to uh, opening all the manhole covers up up to outside of our house and then I laid a cable in some trunking that we got because the house isn't finished here yet, so it's just a piece of dirt ground we're on. And I run a cable into the downstairs garage, and uh, the guy passed the cable through, connected it all up, and put the box in and everything. And we signed up, and it's all taken out of the bank, the contract money. Twenty, I think it was twenty-five euros in the end. So yeah, fiber internet, and very pleased with it. High-speed fiber internet, fantastic connection. We never have a problem with it here. Um, I'm, I'm with the movie star. They've given us some extra film channels with the with the package we got with the film with them as well. But there's a couple of tips I can give you here. Um, 
all the companies do this, but you have to ask at the time what what they offer him. But movie star offer the movies and the and the film packages and stuff like that. And I said I don't want all that. I just want the basic fiber optic connection. Oh, but we can give you film channels and football and sport. No, I don't want all that. I just want the internet. Now, when you've got the internet, we've got Netflix here and. We got the the free version, and I've also got a paid version of it. So we can watch pretty much any television in in the world, or download the apps through the computer. So we just want the basic high speed internet. So I know that Facebook and WhatsApp and Messenger do do these apps now, and you can do these face video calls and things like that for free anyway. But this is what I use. My my mother's in the UK still, and she's in her eighties, and she's only got a landline, no mobile, no internet. So when I want to speak to them, when I want to phone them, I use my mobile phone, connect through the high-speed internet in my house with the app, and I dial up the phone number, and I can speak to them day and night, 24 hours a day, as long as I want, for free. And the app was free as well. And I had to make a few business calls a few months ago to the uh, to the USA, to Miami, and I was on the phone for 45 minutes every day for three days to this company um, uh, talking about something about work and it was free, absolutely free all through my mobile phone calling a landline, a fixed rate landline so get the high speed internet here get the fiber optic internet if you can and then get the apps, download the apps I can't suggest an app for you because there's so many different ones out there and it's all down to personal choice but it's a great way of getting the free phone calls and also I stream the TV through my mobile phone as well and I just get a HDMI cable, plug the HDMI cable into my mobile phone, plug that into the television and I can watch any television channel anywhere in the world for free. So the basic fiber internet is more than enough. Um, so that's another tip about living and working in Spain. So I hope that's helped, guys. I hope it's been some value to you. If you've enjoyed this podcast and found anything at all of value, please leave a comment at the end and Look out for my next podcast. I'm going to be having some special guests. And one of my guests in the very near future is going to be my good friend Alejandro. Alejandro is also the British Honorary Consular here in Spain. So if you've got any questions you would like me to put to Alejandro, uh, anything at all about Spain, connected with Spain, Brexit or the virus or moving here, just put it in the Facebook group and or PM me in my Facebook page and I'll put these questions to Halia Handro in the very next podcast. So thanks for listening and see you soon. If you have enjoyed this podcast by David Wright, then you will love his new books. Out now on Amazon and Kindle, packed with money-saving tips and information on living and working in Spain. Just go to livinginspainbooks.com. David also has a popular blog for expats in Spain. Come and take a look now at britishexpatsinspain.com.